On this great feast today, we actually celebrate two glorious events. We celebrate Our Lady's death and then the subsequent assumption of her body into heaven. And we should think today about how holy Our Lady's death was. It was something incomprehensibly wonderful. It says in Scripture, How precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And if that is the case, then just imagine how precious is the death of Our Lady herself. Now, death is a punishment of sin, so we we might expect that Our Lady would not have to die since she had no sin, not even original sin. But God wanted her to resemble our Lord in all things. And our Lord did not have any sin either, of course. And yet he died. He died for our sins. And so it made sense to have the same for Our Lady. And also, in order to give us an idea of the kind of death that we can also expect to have if we live a holy life, Now, death is the most terrible thing anyone can experience. And there are three main reasons why it is so terrible for us. One reason is because of our attachment to the world, having to give up everything we have in this world. The second reason is our, our remorse for our sins and our fear of our judgment, having to give an accounting of our life. And the third reason is the uncertainty of our salvation. But the death of Our Lady was completely free from all three of these sources of sorrow on her deathbed. First of all, having attachment to the things of this world truly makes death something frightening, something horrible. It says in Scripture, O oh, death, how terrible is the remembrance of thee to a man who has peace in his possessions. But when the saints die, they don't have that suffering because they are not attached to the things of this world. It doesn't bother them to lose their, their family, their friends, their possessions because they love these things only through God. They, they love them only in God. And when they die, they know that they are going to God. That is why it says in Scripture, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. And you may wonder, well, what does it mean, blessed are the dead who die? There's there's another meaning there. It means the people who have died to this world in this life, who treated the things of this world as if they were already dead here, as if they had no possessions, just like a dead person. And they didn't cling to the things of this world. They die in the Lord, and their death is blessed. Those people gave up the desire and the love of of their, their worldly possessions, even in this life. So they could pass into eternity without any difficulty. We can think, for example, of St. Francis of Assisi, who voluntarily gave up all of his his riches and his popularity in this world in order to serve God. He said, my God and my all, that God was the only thing that he wanted. But what saint, even a great saint like St. Francis of Assisi, could ever even come close to the detachment from worldly things that Our Lady had? Who could ever be more united to God in this life than she was. From the time she was a tiny child, only three years old, her parents gave her to the temple where she could serve God. And she lived a very poor life. She always supported herself by by the work of her hands. She had no attachment to any honor in this world or any human respect. Even though she was of royal blood. She was the descendant of a king. In fact, Our Lady revealed to Saint Elizabeth of Hungary that when her parents left her in the temple, she resolved at that point to have no earthly parents, but to only love God and no other good. There's an image of Our Lady in the book of the Apocalypse 
St. John saw a vision of a woman clothed with, a, with the sun and with the moon under her feet. And the commentators of Scripture say that the moon represents this world. It represents worldly possessions that are always coming and going, like the light of the moon. The moon is always getting either brighter or darker. It's never constant. It changes every single night. Just like our fortunes in this world are constantly changing. But Our Lady held the things of this world in contempt. And so she is trampling on, on the goods of this world, symbolized by the moon in the apocalypse. The second thing that makes death very bitter is the memory of the sins that we have committed. Just think of the, 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 the thought of a great sinner on his deathbed about to appear before the judgment seat of Christ in a state of complete terror. But Our Lady had nothing like that. She had nothing to regret in this life. She did not have the tiniest speck of sin. So she was in absolute perfect peace. From the very moment she had the use of reason, she loved God with all of her strength and she continued to do that for her entire life. Every moment she advanced in love and holiness. All of her thoughts and desires and affections were all directed towards God and towards nothing else. She never said even a single word or did even the slightest action except for God and His glory. And all of these immense acts of virtue that filled her life came back to her on her deathbed to surround her with, with, with joy. All the sufferings she had endured in our Lord's passion and her seven sorrows, they all came back to her and she realized then now was the time for her to receive the reward of her immense sufferings. And all of her other virtues that she practiced all filled her mind on her deathbed, her, her immense faith, her confidence in God, her patience in suffering, her humility, her love for souls, and her love for God more than anything else. All these things filled her with joy and confidence. And thirdly, the third thing that makes death difficult for us is the uncertainty of our eternity. Death is called a journey, a passage into the next life. We go from this life to another form of life, either heaven or hell. And certainly when people die in a state of uncertainty about their salvation, they have the most terrible agony of mind. But on the other hand, when the saints die, they are filled with joy because they have confidence in going to heaven. When St. Lawrence Justinian was on his deathbed, he saw his servants around him weeping. And he said, get rid of your tears. This is no time to mourn. He said, you should be happy that I will soon be united with God. And we have many other examples of the saints being filled with joy on their deathbeds. And even the greatest saints didn't have the same certainty of having sanctifying grace in their soul that Our Lady had. Because of this, Our Lady must have had an even greater joy than even the greatest saints ever had on their deathbed. She not only had sanctifying grace in her soul, she had the greatest possible amount of sanctifying grace that any human being could ever have. She had been told by the highest angel in heaven, by Saint Gabriel, that she was full of grace. What an immense source of peace and joy it must have been to her to hear those words at her Annunciation. And she knew that her heart was constantly consumed by the fire of the love of God. It in fact, it consumed her entire being. Her love of God was so intense at every moment of her life that St. Bernard said that it required a constant miracle to keep her alive during her lifetime so that the force of the love of God in her heart wouldn't just overpower her body and, and, and kill her. 
Let us think today about all these thoughts on the death of Our Lady. We want her to be with us at the hour of our death, too, as we say in the Hail Mary. So let us practice the virtues that she practiced, of, of love of God, of humility, detachment from this world, and freedom from every possible sin. And the more we practice those virtues, the more our death will resemble hers. That is the only thing that matters in life, is how we die. And that will depend on how we live. But with Our Lady's help, we can live in such a way that we will die well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.